we start in Cleveland with the game where we had another episode of the greatest buddy cop pairing in the history of the world. LeBron and Delhi both doing their thing. Steph Curry caught fire late, made things interesting. Once again, the Warriors came back, but the Cavs get the W, take the 2-1 series lead. It was just wild. The Cavs were in such command. I stopped taking notes for, for several minutes Whoa. just to admire what was happening out there. Felt like it was over. Then Curry gets hot, and then Delhi hits the deck, as he always does. And the Cavs squeaked out a victory despite these Curry heroics at the end of the game. A phenomenal, phenomenal game ending. Phenomenal first three quarters for the Cavs, and Warriors just couldn't make it up. Yeah, LeBron, uh, 40 points there. The near triple-double at the 12 boards, the eight assists, and the Aussie. Not Lee Ellis, but Matthew Dellavedova. 20 points this guy chipping in. So look, lots to digest here from this game. And I don't want to get too far ahead of ourselves because the Cavs still have to win two games. Uh, I think even the Warriors still favored actually in Vegas to even win this thing. But let me throw this question at you guys and everyone watching. If the Cavs win two more games, would this be a title for the Cavs, LeBron's greatest achievement in basketball? Uh, undoubtedly, I think it would be. It would be his most accomplished title. J.R. Smith is his second best offensive player. To win a title with J.R. Smith as your second best guy, we're talking about Del Vadova as sort of his buddy cop, sure. But since Kyrie went down, this team looks a lot like that 2007 team that LeBron took to the finals when he was riding with Daniel Gibson, Sasha Pavlovich, Drew Gooden, and an aged Adrunas Ogaskis. It's not much better than that, but this is the best version of LeBron we've seen. He is leading them. He is getting everything out of those guys. I mean, those, the four guys that he's rolling with in Delhi and Tristan Thompson and Moskov mm -hmm. and Shumpert, I mean, he's milking these guys for everything they're worth because he's way better than he was eight years ago. He's are, just getting so much out of these guys. Are we seeing one of the greatest finals performance of all time, Trey? Oh, yeah, I totally agree with Tass. If LeBron pulls this off, this is his biggest title win for sure of his then three titles. I mean, it's in Cleveland, which is a big thing. Yep. And you say, is this one of the great title performances of all time? It very well could be. Even Michael Jordan never really beat a team that was better than him, but that's because he was playing on the best team in the league the entire year. Right. But it's still impressive to go into it to Golden State, win a game there, and to knock off the team that's been the best team in the league for the entire season, that would be a huge accomplishment. You see the numbers there. Through the first three games of the finals, LeBron now, in history, has the most points. Uh, 123 points for the, through the first three games. One better there, Rick Barry, in 67. Uh, it, it, what's incredible, too, and we've talked about it a lot here, is the Warriors, this team coming in. I mean, look, I had the Warriors in five. It's uh, not over, though. It's, it, not, it's over. not. It's not. Again, like I said, they still have two wins to, to go here before this is done. But it's amazing because the Warriors are a fast-break team. They led the regular season in fast-break points. But because the way the Cavs are playing, and only playing this way because they have LeBron James, I don't think you could be doing this type of basketball with anyone else in the league where he just goes iso ball, takes so much time off the clock. They're just not allowing the Warriors any chance to run and gun, get up and down. I mean, four fast-break points last night. That would be incredible against any team in any situation, be it the regular season or the playoffs, but especially against the Warriors. And a big part of it is because LeBron iso ball here. Yeah, and LeBron says he doesn't want to play this way. He wants to move the ball. He wants that pace and space that we used to see with the Miami Heat, and I totally believe him. And I don't think I'm drinking the LeBron Kool-Aid. I, I think he just wants to play basketball the way he wants to play basketball, but he sees another team on the other side that's better, so we have to slow it down. And kudos to him and David Blatt for doing this. But that's the only way they're going to win. That's the only way they're going to beat the Golden State Warriors. And you're right, he probably is the only guy that could accomplish this. Of the fact that his efficiency is low, that doesn't bother you at all? Yeah. Who cares they're, because they're of the situation? Two, they're up 2-1 at this point. Does it really matter? And you know LeBron's going to make the right basketball play when he has a chance to find an open guy. He's taking the shots because somebody has to take those shots. Who cares if he's shooting 40%? He's scoring 40 points a game. You're going to miss some shots if you take enough to get to 40 points a game. In, in game three, the two things with LeBron. I mean, look, he's been incredible the whole finals here. But I thought this was, his, first off, his best defensive game. He had, the, he had the four steals. He had a couple of huge blocks, timely blocks. I thought he was really locked in on that end. And, and, you know, I just, and again, the way he was driving the basketball, too, I mean, yeah, they're throwing different bodies at him in the one on one situation. 23 drives to the yep. net in game three. That is huge. He is brutalizing Harrison Barnes and Draymond Green, and it's definitely showing because on the offensive end, neither of those guys have been able to get anything going, and that's just another part and parcel of LeBron being such a strong guy in the post. It's hard to guard him. It takes a lot out of you. You compared LeBron's, like, sort of the role players, his team right now, this squad, to what he was working with in 2007. What's yeah. intriguing to me, if, like, we could, you know, sort of go back in time or pluck this LeBron and put them there, I would love to know 
what a mature, experienced LeBron could have done with that team. Because sure. he was a young guy then, of course, his first finals appearance. I mean, you know, Lee, when we were making our predictions, Lee kept saying how really important experience and maybe hunger, I guess, another word for it, is in a series, in a finals especially. Mm, oh. and, and, you know, I think what we saw in game three especially, it's true. It, it, it seems it's cliche, but the Cavs are wanting those loose balls just a little bit more than the Warriors are. It's Delhi and James Jones and Mike Miller are the guys that are continually hitting the floor and, for, and, and most of the time coming up with those loose balls. And you're talking about those guys don't have any finals experience. So, you know, who does the credit go to? It should go to LeBron James for the way he's Outside making... Outside of Mike Miller, of course, well, yeah. Yeah, and the guys... Jones? Yeah, and James Jones. I mean, the guys who are playing significant yeah. minutes do not have any play right. uh, finals experience. LeBron is getting that out of them. I mean, he is showing them, you know, through his leadership that you don't have many chances at the finals, guys. And you can see it across on the other side in the other locker room. You know, David Lee and Andre Iguodala, who we'll get to, are showing the urgency that a veteran shows. Mm -hmm. and, and I think they're really helping out those starters who don't have the finals experience. Because you look at it, yeah, the Cavs want it a little bit more at this point. I think we're going to see a different oh, game. I mean, form. you've got old guys like Mike Miller lying out for loose balls, mm -hmm. James Jones. I mean, Della Vigova's been doing it all playoffs long, but numerous times throughout this game. And, and from the get-go, yeah, too, not absolutely. late. Not only when we're talking fourth quarter and, hey, we got to get this ball. A couple times in the first quarter, be it Jones or Miller, flying, diving there to keep balls alive. Delhi going into the second row. I mean, it's pretty crazy. Like that last play where Delhi dives in the late-game situation mm -hmm. after LeBron probably got away with a foul <laughs> taking yeah, out slide Steph Curry on the slide tackle there. But that Delhi one, it almost reminded me a little bit of like Rodman. Not yeah. Rodman would actually jump way higher in the air and lie out, but that's the full-on extension going for that thing, wanting it more than these guys. Yeah, their crowd t-shirts say all in, and you can tell oh. that this team definitely is, and they all have just bought into all we have to do is play defense and play hard. LeBron will take care of the rest. We'll hit our open shots, and I think it's impressive from LeBron and David Blatt to be able to rejigger their team this late in the playoffs to become a super gritty team that's winning by making little tiny plays like this. And that, was, that was his fourth season when he went into the finals in, in 2007. Yeah, young guy. Yeah, he was an extremely, a fourth season for a guy who obviously came out of high school. He, he's just drastically different. And he is, again, milking, I think is the best word, milking every single <laughs> yeah. ounce of talent and grit and determination out of his guys while the Warriors just haven't shown that quite yet.